the celeb is someone like Pink, people that I was like a fan of as a kid, like yeah. Gwen Stefani came in once and I was like, <laughs> show with your boy Jack Fowler on Switchbox TV. Now, my guest, you may recognize her voice if you're up early as she is, as she is the amazing Sean Welby, who is on currently the Capital Breakfast morning show. How are you? I'm very well, Jack. Thanks so much for having me on. No problem. Absolute pleasure. So, I want to know what it's been like for you being a presenter, because when I've done my research, I'm not too sure what you don't do when it comes <laughs> to presenting. Um, but we're going to dive into that a little bit later on. I just want to quickly know, what's it been like with co-hosting with Sonny recently, as he's just won the uh, Dancing on Ice uh, show? How was that? How was it being with him? Was he, was he a bit grumpy with the early mornings? Do you know what he did so well? Like, we're so lucky that Sonny, like, has extra energy levels. And, like, all you have to do is feed him a bit of Marmite. And he's like, he's like a gremlin. Like, he turns into gizmo and he's wild again. And so we just we just have to keep him topped up. Like, I encourage him going a little bit. He gets really hyper, like, quite easy if you egg him on. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really bad at, like, making him, I'm like, go on, have some Marmite or have another coffee and I'll get him hyper again. But um, he's, yeah. he, he, you know what? He's really good. Like, yeah. and he never really moaned. It was a couple of days when he did like a full week of training and 4 a.m. starts that he was he was so shattered. But um, no, nah, I don't know. There's something I don't know what it is, but he he just managed to just stay upbeat and fun and pass yeah. off to him. Because I, I remember I was watching some of your Instagram clips and it always looked like you lot was just having a laugh. Like it never ever looked like he was work. You guys, you guys don't look like you're working. I'm gonna be honest with you. You just look there with a great time. Jack, don't tell anyone we're getting paid to <laughs> No, it, it, honestly, it's so true. And when he won and we came back in on the Monday to give him like an after party, none of us felt like we'd done a day's work because it was just so, it was like our night out almost ended up on air because we got him drinking again because he'd only had one hour sleep. So mm. we were like, right, let's just top him up and keep it going. Mm. And it ended up being like, you, you do genuinely sometimes forget that we've got listeners. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I saw as well that you've got a makeshift ice rink. Honestly. Talk to me, talk to me about that, because that just, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. <laughs> you know, like when you think, when someone like comes up, what normally happens at like Capital or whatever, is someone suggests a, like a mad idea, and then we all decide how mad is it. And like, one of the producers was like, should we get an ice rink on the roof? And we all just went, yeah, that's cool. And then we're like, it only was when it was happening. I was like, how are they getting it up there? And yeah. where does the ice come from? And yeah. how do they get it in the lift? Is it in blocks? Are they pouring it in? Does it set overnight? Crazy. It, it, it just sounds mad, but equally very, very fun. Mate, so fun. And that is what I would say I love about radio and, and capital in particular like no idea is too stupid and like if we can give it a go we will do it and it makes work so much fun because you like go i don't know you just i really i couldn't even believe how good the ice rink was yeah. and that we'd managed to turn it around and get it up there and sunny had no clue and yeah funny so working on on capital what would you say is your highlight i mean that sounds like a highlight <laughs> but if, <laughs> is there any other highlight you know what? I think I've got some to come. As in, when I joined, I literally joined the week of lockdown. My year anniversary is coming up. Wow. And so, which is mad. But it meant I haven't done like a, a summertime ball, a jingle bell ball. All these things that the guys tell me, they're like, just wait, Sean, till we can go out. Um, yeah. I mean, the lads went out to Love Island. You know, they went out to Mallorca. Um, I don't know which season it was, actually. It might have only been 2019, probably it was. Yeah, where did they go? Was it the one in South Africa or is it the one in no, the Mallorca one? So right. I, it probably was the Tommy Fury series. Yeah, I think I don't think it. I don't think it was mine. I, no, I don't, I don't know if it was actually. I think they went. Yeah, um, but they do loads of cool things like that. So there's lots that I'm really looking forward to. But like already, we've done some cool stuff. Like 
one of my mad ideas was to get a Batmobile into work for Roman as a surprise because he was, he loves Batman so much. And the fact that it happened and we had this Batmobile in Leicester Square, I was like, I love my job. Well, listen, look, once, once you put an ice rink on the roof of Capitol's building, I don't think there's much you can't do. No, I agree. So you said that you started near enough a year ago now on Capitol. How did it come about? It's so weird. Well, I was doing an evening show on Heart, right? So I was doing, so I was working the proper other end of the day. And um, like, I, ne I never like moaning about my job because I do love my job but working evenings and, and I would wait all day to start. Mm. It was a really weird ex like thing. You're sort of twitching. And I, I was going to work earlier and earlier just out of boredom. Cause I was like, what time shall I get in for my shift? Yeah. Um, and so anyway, I was doing the evening show and then this opportunity came up to join the breakfast team. I had no idea about it. I was on holiday and also with me being at heart. And although we're all mates, in reality, we mm. are kind of like rival stations. So I didn't even think I would get like a look in. It wasn't on my radar. And I got called into the office on Monday morning, right? And I'd just been on holiday with a girl mate and I had been like partying, drinking on camera, like filming all my nights out. And I yeah. honestly thought, I was gonna get to like told off. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> they're like, they literally said like, Sean, can we have a chat? And I was like, oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I was going through like my archive of videos, going, what did I put up? Yeah, yeah. And then and then they said, look, Sean, we'd like you to demo for the for the gig, uh, for Capital Breakfast. And I was like, oh my god. And they even said to me, look, you're on heart. This might not get approved, but we still want to put you forward for it. They were kind of saying, don't get your hopes up but we're throwing you in the mix. Yeah. So I didn't, I genuinely didn't even think I'd have a chance. And then I went after they'd finished their breakfast show one, one week, I just went and did like a demo with them where we did like a mock show. Right. And you know, like when you just know you get on with people, mm. we just all clicked. And you know, I've since found out they felt the same, but I literally left that room going, ah, oh, that was like easy because it was so natural and like, they felt like my lad mates that I've got from back home, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you mentioned before, before you was, you know, you was working on high, it was in the evening. Now, getting up early in the morning. Are you a morning person? Oh, who is at 4 a.m.? No, <laughs> no. Oh, mate, it's so horrendous. It's that time where you'll always wake up in shock, like you're gonna be late for a flight feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I kept saying to everyone, you know, when will it kick in that I get into this rhythm? And they were like, you never, ever get used to it. I don't think you can. Four in the morning, it's middle of the night. Oh. So what time, what time, what time are you going to bed then? Oh, I get it. So I'm terrible because I'm still quite a night owl. So I think ideally I should be getting into bed about eight, half eight to get yeah. proper night's sleep. Yeah, proper night's sleep. Proper, and, but <laughs> like now, like I'm bad because you end up, you don't do anything all day. And then for some reason you come alive at night and you're fanning around doing this and that, watching telly, Netflix, Instagram, TikTok or whatever. And the next thing I know, it's half nine, 10, half 10. Half 10 is normally my cut off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's, that's so the type of dedication. But that's the type of dedication, I mean, you, you've got to do. Do you know what I mean? That's something that, doesn't matter what field of work it is, there's always going to be a sacrifice. Now, yeah. what would you say is, I know your sleeping pattern is a sacrifice, right? <laughs> but what else would you say that you have sacrificed to get where you are in your career? Oh, man. I mean, without getting too deep, yeah. I think to get where I've got now, I've sacrificed, like, my life a bit, as in my life became work, and yeah. I sacrificed holidays, when I was first just trying to get into presenting, like way back, yeah. I literally didn't have a holiday for four years because I was so scared that I'd be miles away. Let's say I'd gone to like America for a holiday or something. I, I had this paranoia that, that that would be when I would get a call, right, there's an audition, we need you to be in London tomorrow. And I would be like, I can't go. Yeah. So that fear was mm -hmm. so real that I think it has 
definitely had an impact on, you know, previous relationships where I put the job first and, and I would say yes to every single thing because I was so scared that if I didn't say yeah, they'd never give me a chance again. Like, you'll know, like in this industry, you always yeah. feel, you feel like, don't you? Like if you turn it down, that was your chance. No, I, honestly, I, I literally had that problem. Uh, back in 29, uh, yeah, back in 2020, in the summer, I uh, went to Ibiza and literally the day I landed, uh, Jack, uh, you've got a audition to be on the circle. I was like, what, what, I, I can't make it. So it was, yeah, I mean, it's so, so frustrating, but again, it's just, it's part of the work, isn't it? It's not like a nine to five, you know, you're literally all day, every day, you have to be ready, you have to be available. Out of interest for you with that, what went through your mind and what did you do? I mean, it was literally the next day and I I was chatting to my management, like, what should I do? What should I do? And they was like, you should come back because... Oh. I mean, but, but from a manager's point of view, right, COVID, there's not been a load of work, you know, so when there has been work, grab it with both hands. But, um, yeah, I stayed in Abita. Mate, but, but this is it. <laughs> And fair play to you, because you just got there. And I think sometimes, I think you can go too far the other way. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it was it was pricey. It was a pricey. Like, I paid for everything, my flight. We, you know, we had a really nice villa. So it wasn't, you know, like you do with the lads. It wasn't like a, a cheapo one. You just, it was a nice one. You know what I mean? It was, you know, dinner plans are booked and excursions. Like, it was really, really planned well. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I kind of stayed in Ibiza and soaked up the sun rather than coming back into lockdown and, and jumping on the circle, but next time, hopefully. Well, this um, is, and I think actually, maybe with hindsight, I am learning that as long as you're a decent, you know, half, you know do you know what I mean? Like a decent person and like yeah, you yeah. are a hard worker. I yeah. do think opportunities do come back around, but I think it is just a paranoia in this industry that it won't. But the thing is as well, Personally, I'd rather have that paranoia than just go and just do everything and anything without caring about my career. You know, it shows that you're serious about what you're, you're, you're doing. Yeah, I think honestly, like I had nothing to fall back on, if you know what I mean. I didn't really have an in in showbiz or I didn't know anyone even in London. I'm from the, the Midlands, from Nottingham. So okay. I kind of felt the pressure of like, if I mess this up, I've only got myself to blame and I can't get back in. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to radio, um, to Heart Radio. So back in 2017 um, is when you started Heart Radio, is that right? Yeah, that, I think that sounds right, yeah. Roughly, roughly right. And you've interviewed some of the best and most iconic uh, artists there are. I mean, Pink, I've got here, I've got Chris Pratt and Sam Smith. Yeah, yeah, amazing. How, how was that? Honestly, that is the best bit of the job in a way. Like, and that's something that I've missed on Capital because because of lockdown, we've only had Zoom calls with people. Yeah. But I do feel privileged to get, you get um, a side of a celebrity or, or an actor or whoever it is, a singer, you get a side to them that maybe only their mates get to see. And, and mm. that's quite a privilege. There's something about radio that's a little bit more chilled than telly and i think it is because they half forget they're being filmed like our cameras are like the big brother cameras so yeah. there's no sort of cameraman and sound guy it's just all built in and so like like love island or big brother or whatever yeah. you don't you forget the cameras are there and everyone loosens up mm. and then you get mm. real like nice moments where you really feel like you got to meet them yeah i mean i i I've ne I'd love to interview Drake. That was that would oh, be, yeah. that, that would be amazing. Uh, but I was lucky enough to be actually invited to one of his um, private uh, like listening parties, as it were, when yeah. he was in London. And um, you know, I've seen him like six times in concert, and it's Drake. You know, like oh my god, Drake. But when I met him, it was just him and his boys, which right. was such an amazing insight into just him. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't, you know, he wasn't at all as I expected it to be by meeting him, but it was really nice. Cause like you said, there was, obviously there was no cameras there, but it was just relaxed, you know. Was it quite to, um, a small venue type thing? It was literally at, um, at the Rosewood um, where he was staying in London. Oh, sure. And um, he, it was after, it was at four o'clock in the morning. He just had um, a few people come to the um, lobby area, like the, the bar area. Um, and I, I was there with, uh, with a friend and we both went in and Skepta was there. Um, Drake was there and, he, and you know what 
I'm a massive Drake fan, you can't tell. And they're playing the music. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know this song because, oh yeah, it's not released. So I was, I was just having a great time. I was like, oh my God, I've got insight um, into that, which was just crazy. But I was nervous. Now, that's me being nervous, not interviewing them. Do you get nervous interviewing A-listers? Yeah, especially, I mean, it might be a bit easier now. I've got the boys with me, Sonny and Roman, but when it was literally me and them, and sometimes it, sometimes you, you've barely had a second to say hello because the way it works in our building, in Global, there's a few radio stations all, all doing it at the exact same time. So like Heart gets their time slot, then Capital, then whatever. So not only have you got this pressure that you haven't, got, you haven't got time to sit with them in a green room, have a little chat. Uh, yeah. be, let's take our time, love, half an hour. It's normally capital comes out, heart goes in, everything's a rush. Get that team out. They're still taking selfies with the celeb to get their pictures while you're setting up the desk. Yeah. And the first time you chat to them sometimes is with the mic on. These are because quite often they were pre-recorded, the guests. Right, right. So this is in the case of pre-recorded guests. You you might have eight minutes. You get a precise amount of time. And so the pressure is like, don't waste those minutes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can't dive straight in without warming someone up and going, hey, how are you doing? Do you, yeah. you know, you've jet lagged. Where have you coming from? Yeah. Out of London. Like you have to have all that fluff. But then you've got producers and editors thinking, we need to get into the meat of this because you've got five minutes left. So I think the time pressure makes it worse and then when the celeb is someone like pink people that i was like a fan of as a kid like yeah. when stefani came in once and i was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to cope so yeah I, I, it is quite intimidating and i think actors weirdly are quite intimidating because they're a bit more quiet they're not necessarily like their persona mm. so sometimes you're like i remember like mr bean so Rowan Atkinson right. came in and he was he was doing um he was doing the interview with another co-star who who got stuck in traffic. So I was now stuck in an, like a bit of an awkward situation where I had to make small talk with Mr. Bean, who was quite a shy guy in real life. He's quite, he, he, quite shy. He, he really is. Like he I think he had a really bad stutter at one point. He had like uh, uh, you know, was very very much an introvert. And uh, I watched the documentary about it actually, and he said um, oh. the way he just was able to communicate with people and, and you know have friends and just be accepted kind of thing was just by acting and just doing that. And that's how Mr. Bean come about. He said it was actually you know him being himself and actually how he, he just in, in, I mean just increased it a little bit more to make it more comical, which I thought was great. I that's love cool. I know that. I love that. Um, but if you could interview anyone, past or present, who would it be? Oh, there's so many people. This is a big question. Here. It is because there's so many people on the list that I would like to interview. Mm. Like, but there's people that I'd love to see in real life. Like, I want to see The Rock. How big is he? Yeah. Can he give me a bear hug? Can he? You know, <laughs> I just want to. People like um, I think it is actors, you know, because they really are up there as these yeah. mystical people. Yeah. Um. The boys were telling me about Jack Black being one of their favourite guests. Really? And I, and he's, you know what, you, you really look forward to guests that are game for playing along. So those kind of comedians and, and actors, they're really up there because you know you can push them and get them to do something silly. But yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's a tough one, isn't it? Like you say, Drake would be pretty epic. That would be, that would be a... Kanye that. West, can you imagine? Kanye, yeah, that... I wouldn't know what to do with Kanye because he could come out any time. Any time he'd be like, you don't know, you don't know, Sway. Like, you don't, you don't know. I like, just, at that point, what do you do? Because Kanye West is having a go at you. You're not really going to have a guy in back. So like, no, you know what I mean? Got, <laughs> he would be intimidating to interview. And, and actually, weirdly, it just reminded me that one of the most intimidating people I interviewed was Will I Am because he's yeah. so intelligent. And I felt like I couldn't, keep up with his train of thought and every time I try you know when you try and join in on a chat and you can't yeah. you get the tone all wrong yeah he's saying he's like doing that thing where he's gone and this this and this so um you know you know what I mean what would you do and I'm going care 
Like, um, I, I didn't even hear, I don't even know what we're talking about at this point. And he's yeah. sort of going, yeah, so would you do the X, Y approach or the Z, I? And I'm like, so. You know, a whole different language, mate. Not, not a clue. Not yeah. A clue. Um, Ed Sheeran, you, you was able to, to do, I think it says here, this Regent Street Christmas lights turning oh. on. Now, that in itself must have been amazing. Just doing the Christmas lights turning on itself was amazing. But doing it with Ed Sheeran for his secret live concert, how was that? Oh yeah, yeah. So they were kind of they were slightly two separate things, but I know what you mean. Um, wicked. So we did a secret concert with Ed Sheeran um, with only about thirty guests, I think it was. Right. That was wicked. By this Where was point, that? Um, do you know what it was? Um, it was at Chelsea. What's the football? Stamford Bridge. What? Say again. Stamford Bridge. Yeah, it was Stamford Bridge. They've got like a little venue. Yes, they do. they do. I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was there and it was wicked. And by this point, I'd interviewed him a few times. So genuinely, and this, this is because he is so nice. Yeah. He did make me feel like a friend. Um, and it made the gig so easy because I was just, I remember like was he was just ordering Nando's and we were just sat in the back just chatting. And it was I really- got a black card for Nando's. He's obsessed with Nando's. Really? Yeah, and, and I'm just trying to remember, because I'm sure he shocked me with what, like, you know, like what hot heat he went for. I feel like he's like, I don't want to, in fact, I feel like I don't want to get it wrong, because he's one extreme or the other. It was either that he was mild, and I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? Yeah. Or it shocked me that he was like extra, extra hot. I would be more surprised that it'd been extra, extra hot. Yeah, like, I would be more surprised if it was that. But yeah, I've heard so many stories about Ed Sheeran, him being such a just a normal, that like normal cool dude. Oh, just... Sorry, mate. I've, ah, I've pressed something. <laughs> Where are you? Oh no, my computer's trying to download Adobe. Sorry. Oh, right on. <laughs> here we go. I'm here. I'm here. You're back. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just heard that he's um, a very, very cool, normal kind of just a guy that loved music and just was able to capitalize on opportunities. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the core of it. I think when you're doing a job because you actually love the job, yeah. rather than the fame or whatever yeah. side effect comes of it, I think it really comes across if you're like proper passionate. And with him, he just somehow got the gift of staying like as normal as you make down the pub. And that's the only way of describing it. He hasn't gone to showbiz. He's not very flash. Yeah. And he's also one of those people that like sometimes, especially when you're nervous interviewing someone, he was one of my first ever interviews on Heart. Wow. In fact, I think he was the first. And I was so nervous. And some people make it worse for you because they, you might ask a question that's maybe not quite right. And they'll go, you know, like they might be like, no. Whereas yeah. he's the kind of guy that if he knew he'd got it wrong, he'd either go along with it or he'd go, oh, yeah, what you mean is this. And, and he saves you. That's, that's helpful. <laughs> no, it's, it's very kind. <laughs> that is very helpful. Um, yeah, I mean, just, just crazy because the list of people that you've interviewed is, is brilliant. Really, really, yeah, really good. pretty Probably. mad, pretty mad. That's the, like the mad side of the job, and yeah. it is weird because the more you do it, the more these people just honestly seem so normal, which is amazing. Which is all you can really ask for. No one really wants to interview someone who's a little bit, you know, too far above their station because, like you said, it makes it a bit awkward at times, yeah. Um, but also, you, you're a weather girl. I mean, I, I, I'm reading all this stuff, right? I'm thinking, like, <laughs> it's just mad. Talk to me about that. So you're, you're, you, do you still do it? Are you still doing it? Was it back in the day? Okay, so Channel 5 okay. Weather Girl. Now, I've been on YouTube, okay? And I've seen some of the, uh, <laughs> some of the shows, which we'll go into in a minute. Um, but how did that come about? Is that something that you studied for? Me. Right? Two words for you with that job. Blagged it. <laughs> like, I didn't have a Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I didn't do geography. I'm awful with place names. I have barely traveled around the UK, let alone anywhere. So I was almost the worst person for that job, right? But as I said to you before, I was a yes man and I wasn't going to say no to this opportunity. 
Um, to cut a long story short, I got yeah. uh, spotted on an advert. Um, so I was like hustling and doing jobs. Yeah. And the, the guy who owned, he was a CEO of like Channel 5, but also a load of magazines like uh, OK Magazine, New Magazine. I had just so happened done an advert for New Magazine and it played on a loop in this guy's office because he owned these magazines. So he wanted his adverts on all the screens in the building. And because, because I ended up on every single advert, which is another long story, but um, I, all you had to say was one word. And I think on this advert, I just like went, Peter Andre. Right. So I owe Peter Andre quite a lot to be yeah. honest. <laughs> It was it basically the advert was like, "What's in new magazine this week?" And it was going diet celebrity, and I'm like Peter Andre. But I must have been going round and round, and eventually the boss went, "Who's this girl? Get her in." And you know, like that's how sometimes things are. You try and hustle and do so much stuff, and then it's just the odd coincidence, yeah. a bit of fate. And yeah. uh, I got in, had a chat with the um, the editor of of Channel Five. And he was asking me what I'd been doing. And I sort of, I did have a bit of a story to tell him. I told him all the things I'd been presenting and mm -hmm. trying to get into. And he was like, hmm. He was like, yeah, people keep giving you a chance, Sean. Maybe we should. And I was like, oh. But then that's all he said. And it was like cryptic. And I left. It was like <laughs> puff of smoke and he was gone. And I was like, what? So I went home back to my job in a clothes shop yeah. back in the Midlands. Didn't think anything of it. And then two weeks later, I literally just get a phone call saying, right, Channel 5, they've decided you're going to be their new weather girl. And I was like, what? And I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. I had to go down to the Met office, do a crash course. Madness. That's crazy. That's so crazy. So there's you, you know, little you in Nottingham in a, in a clothes shop, but now I have, you know, millions of views. Now, when I say millions, I literally mean about 10 million views on YouTube. Um, collectively with your funny kind of ways of letting us know what the what the weather's going to be like. I mean, I, I watched some last night. I watched the Star Wars one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I thought was amazing. I, I, to be honest with you, I'm not massive on Star Wars, but I thought what you did was great. Now, for the viewers watching, Sean somehow implements Star Wars sayings and quotes into her weather reports, which is so smart. Um, how do you do it? Is it something that you do, you know, you just write it on the Uber, in the Uber on the way there, or do you plan it? What is it? How do you do it? On, honestly, it's just, it, because it started off as dares, you know, like within the office. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was yeah. Just, it was just only because, like, I was trying to enjoy the job, if you know what I mean, and make it funny for my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was getting, you know, the floor manager to give me a word to sneak in, and I just started it small. It started with, oh, Sean, get get the word uh, like banana or ninja into the forecast. And I saw it as like, okay, it's challenge just, on. Yeah. So it started with small things. And then I started sneaking in like weird stuff like Nicolas Cage movies or Beyonce lyrics. And it got to the point where I was doing them on a Friday in particular. I would, I would put it on Twitter and put Dare Sean on a Friday, give me a word watch the forecast, see which one I get in there. Um, and then Star Wars was just because the, there was a new movie out after like 20 years. It was a lot of hype. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, I'd hidden all these dares from my bosses. But this time I thought, I will get absolutely ruined if I don't tell the bosses what I'm doing. Because I wanted to fit as many in a 40-second forecast as possible. Yeah. So the idea came 10 minutes before we did it. And I was, I, and what I used to do, I used to hand write out the forecast. Yeah. So I got people, because I actually hadn't seen loads of Star Wars films. So I said to everyone in the office, I was like, give me any Star Wars reference you can think of. And they'd say words like Wookiee, um, Darth Vader and all this. And I just kept looking at what words I could change to make them like a pun. Yeah. And then... Um, it was just like every, you know, fluke thing sometimes. It wasn't overly planned. It was just a bit of a laugh. We did it first take. And then the rest is sort of history. We, I knew that it would do quite well online. And I was really into like Twitter and yeah. um, stuff at the time. So I did plead for Channel 5 to give me the footage yeah. and get it out. And 
the next morning I woke up and it was like those moments where you've just gone viral and I You're couldn't viral. believe it. So it wasn't anything you read off autocue then? Because that was the question I was going to ask. It, it was not autocue, it was all just... Yeah, because the because actually, you know where you'd normally have an autocue? Yeah. That's actually the map, so I can see the map looking forward. Right, and you're on a green but, screen. Yeah, it was like a mirror of myself. Yeah, on a green yeah. screen, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, that is... <laughs> May amazing, but also quite jokes. The fact that your bosses didn't know as well is even better, I think. So fun. But you've done so much presenting and you've, you know, you were presented the award leading presenter in 2016 for all your presenting skills and everything like that, which is amazing. Now, what top tips would you give to a presenter who's up and coming? You know, what, what top tips? What, what top tips and what do's and don'ts? Okay. I think there's a few things, right? The first thing is to try and think about the shows that you would want to present. So rather than just, it's hard at the beginning because you might have to physically do a bit of everything. Yeah. But when I first started to make a show reel, I didn't have any footage. And that's often the catch. Like yeah. you want to get into presenting. You've got to show people you can present, yeah. but you haven't had any jobs. So fake it till you make it. My first show reel was all me pretending to host shows. And all I did was go to places that I'd want to do. So I literally went to a local field and pretended I was at Glastonbury. You know, that kind of thing. Wow. So I, so I had the right backdrop, but then I would host, I, I would just do like a link to camera to show that I could do it. Or I would interview somebody in the street as if I was working on a, you know, like a Saturday night takeaway type show. Like I would, I would go off and do the things that it was almost like putting it out there to the universe. Yeah. These are the shows I want to work on. Here's how I present. So that's my first tip. Like you don't need to spend loads of money or try, you know, you don't, you shouldn't be waiting till you've had a job. Just, really? just make a reel and make it as, as, as short and as sharp as you can. And then the second thing is to like be as authentic as you can, because I think all of us, I'm defo guilty of this. Like, you put on a voice almost. Yeah. And you start projecting and you, yeah. you go weird. You suddenly put up, someone starts, sticks a mic on you and you suddenly start pronouncing things like the queen. And you start, you know what I mean? You start doing things. You just, it, it takes time. It does take time. But when you're just natural and, you, and you're just yourself, that's what people want to see. Yeah. And, and even if, like, what if, say if what you want to do is be like a newsreader, I used to always joke that there was like a crime watch voice, right? Because they'd forget to do it when they chatted to a, like they'd have a guest on and they'd say, um, oh, well, thank you very much, officer. Uh, we will make sure that um, we, we stay safe and uh, we'll lock our doors. Thank you very much. Coming up next, we find out. And this voice comes out when they go to be presenter mode. Yeah. And, and I think you can, you, you can do it when you try and do news. I definitely did it when I first started radio because the mic literally comes here and you go from going, morning, you're right, to good morning, how are you doing? Yeah. And what am I doing? What is this voice? But that, again, that comes with time. That definitely yeah. comes with time, definitely comes with experience. And I think, you know, you have to start somewhere. Do you know what I mean? I think the first job you're going to do probably isn't going to be the best, but yeah. you've started. Uh, mate, a hundred percent. And I think another top tip, say if like you're doing YouTube, but if you really are dreaming of doing bigger things or as in like telly or, or yeah. big productions, yeah. something that I definitely think is a good habit to get into is like, if all you ever do is, is blog in your own bedroom, mm. the, the, I've seen it happen to say like YouTubers who have done this transition from just blogging and doing everything themselves to the camera to suddenly you're in a very busy room with a lot of people actually watching you and there's cameramen and there's sound people and there's people at the sides and then there's lights and you can freeze up because you're so not used to like the distractions yeah you're used to a very calm environment and just a camera so i think it's really good if you can to do stuff when you have got people in the room watching you even if it feels self-conscious yeah. and and to I know obviously we can't at the moment, but when all the restrictions lift, it's like try and do some things that take you out of your comfort zone where you maybe are literally talking to strangers in the street or you've got 
an audience watching you so you feel that pressure? Yeah, because I think I, I've definitely been in positions where, you know, I've now got an earpiece in or yeah. I've got an autocue. And I, I, but that's the kind of thing that you can't really do on your own, I don't think. I think it's when you go to that next level when you've got earpieces in and people are talking to you, it, it's just like so much going on. You've got the lights, you've got the producer, you've got someone talking to your ear, it's an auto cue, you've got the guest. Like so many things to go, go through. But you're right, I think it's definitely taking yourself out of the comfort zone as much as you possibly can for then that opportunity to come up when you've got all the glitz and camera around you that you can actually take the opportunity that you've been given. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a hundred percent. I think it is literally just like you said before, it's a case of like, you can't cheat time. These yeah. things take time. You learn to get comfortable. You find your rhythm, you find your natural voice and your pace and whatever. But if you can really try and push yourself into uncomfortable scenarios where you have to focus and present, mm -hmm. it really will take you forward because then you don't feel as scared when it's the real deal and you actually are doing a bigger show or or you're suddenly live on telly. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, there must have been a, a time in your your career whilst being on live, live TV or radio, that something has happened that may have been a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> something. I don't know what it could be. Anything that you could think of that is a little bit embarrassing that's happened. Oh, God. I'm sure, like, so many things... Um, <laughs> from being like on a on a red carpet and the wind blowing my entire dress up. Oh, I hate when that happens. Do you um, know I no, no, hate no. when a dress my dress goes up. Do you know, I hate it. Um, that's a, that's a classic. Yeah. Um, I've had it where you've got the question wrong. You've done the research wrong. Yeah. And if if you're lucky, the the person you're interviewing glosses over it. If you're not so lucky, they make you pay for it. If you know what I mean. And and I've had some dodgy moments on red. Oh, I remember being way out of my depth and I did the Harry Potter 10 year red carpet, right? It was all the movies had finished. It was the final one. It was 10 years of Harry Potter and I watched two of them. And this was where saying yes backfired because I, I wanted to be there. Yes. I'm on this red carpet and I don't know who's a guest and who was in the film. And the only way I could try and gauge it was to go, so why are you such a fan of the Harry Potter franchise, right? And based on what they answered by going, oh, well, when I, when I joined the cast or, oh, well, my, you know, when I, when I played the role of whatever, and then I'd go, okay, they're in it. And then, <laughs> and then if they said like, oh, I've always been a big fan and I can't believe I'm here to watch the film tonight, I'd go, you're a guest, right? right. That's amazing. I mean, that, that credit to you because you have the initiative to come up with that kind of question to gauge. <laughs> it's fun, though. I don't think that's brilliant. I, I think that's great. And that's what you call experience. That, that's what you call experience, being able to read read the guest and read the carpet, not knowing who it is you're actually interviewing. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've, honestly, I've had loads. I've spilt hot sauce down Rita Ora's bright white designer dress. And she and I was the first interview of the day, so she had to do the rest, and it was carnage. What did she say? I, I, yeah, I, I've, I've met Rio a few times. She seems quite cool, but what did she, what did she say? What, what she was, was her reaction to that? Genuinely, she was so good about it. Yeah. But I don't know if when she got out of the room, I'm sure she was fuming. She was so nice to me about it, but you would be livid. <laughs> I've got this orange hot sauce stained down my dress. I mean, I would be. I mean, I, I would like. I probably would. She. I'd be very kind and warm to you, but I would be like, "What the hell? Yeah. What the hell?" So you got the whole day of Pats and, and yeah. being interviewed, and it looks like she can't. She's missed her mouth. That's what it looks. It, look, it looks worse than that. You're, you've gone home. You know what I mean? You're in the movie on the way home. You're going back up to Nottingham, but she's on the red. She's on the red carpet. Yeah. With what's all down there? Looking like she's missed her mouth. Honestly, the if I could do whole hour on stuff I've got wrong and that's the other thing that I have to say like none of us are perfect we're no. all slightly winging it and flagging it here and there and yeah. gaining a bit of experience along the way and but we're all we always get it wrong I think everyone has to go through that stage at some point and, and like you said no one's perfect it's no. No, one, no one's perfect and I think sometimes people actually don't start doing things that they want to do because they're worried they're not going to get it right but no one's going to get it right all the time you know, even no. at the deck, even at the deck, at the height of their career, they make mistakes. 
I've seen them make mistakes on um, on celebs get me out and um, get me out. Uh, I'm a celebrity get me out of here. But if that's just that's just the industry. That's just TV. That's just yeah. And a bit like a comedian getting heckled, the more mistakes you make along the way, the better you get at dealing with them, laughing them off, and actually making them part of the show. With Capital, the people's favourite parts of our breakfast show is when one of us messes up, and it happens every day between one of us. Really, what what would mess up be though? What how would, what is a mess up? What would what would you clarify as a mess up? Well, it could just be that you've said something that sounds like something else, and because it's a family friendly show, you can't explain why you're suddenly corpsing. Um, yeah. One of the classic um, stories was we had a, we we were talking about a lad, and if I tell you what, it was a lad on a tractor, and he was pulling his grandma behind on a on a trailer mm-hmm. but the way Sonny said it was he went this man's been towing his nan no <laughs> we couldn't breathe we were dead and we we were crying and no one spoke on air for a good two minutes because none of us could talk and we couldn't really say why it sounded dodgy yeah, of course not. so we were so we have moments like that all the time where someone go says something that sounds a bit like yeah. Oh, yeah. Just play a song. Play a song. Play any song. Just play any song. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> I, I've, had, <laughs> I've literally had stuff like um, when I did the show, on, when I did the heart show on my own, you have to do all the buttons and everything yourself yeah. and all the faders. And it's quite, there's times when it's really complicated. When, when it gets to like a six o'clock, seven o'clock um, on the hour, mm-hmm. you get a news bulletin yeah. and the news is already packaged and recorded. So you you have to fire the music that plays underneath it. You have to then fire in the news, and then you you you're firing in other things that like go this is hot or whatever. And you're doing a lot, and there's a button that you can press that automatically plays the songs for you. Once you get to the songs, you can press this button, and it will just go through them until you're ready to talk again. Yeah. I'd left that button on, so it was already in sequence to play everything. And then I pressed three buttons at the same time. And what ended up was a really serious news bulletin going, and 15 die in a bus accident. And at the same time, I'm playing Pharrell Williams happy. Cause I'm happy. And I couldn't, (laughs) honestly, I couldn't stop it. I was like, no. I didn't know how to correct it. It was awful. And that played throughout the whole serious news. So I've had my share of... That's got to be up there. That has literally got to be up there with one of the worst cock-ups on radio. It's such... Wow. Honestly, Jack, I've got so many. But, but the thing is, it, it, you didn't get fired. No. Nope. Um, and it may or may have not circulated on socials. But equally, it might have actually boosted your views up and your listeners up on your show. You know what? Because I think as long as you learn, like I never actually ever did it again. And actually the bosses at the time said, everyone makes a mistake like that once where you leave it in this automatic mode. They're like, you won't do it again. And I never did. Yeah. Well, with good reason to as well. Yeah. That is that was a shock. Um, right. I'm going to finish this interview with a little game. Oh, come on. A little, a little game, a little, a little, a little, a little game. So it's a quick fire round. Okay, quick fire. Don't think too much about it. Just go with the flow. Okay. Okay, cool. You ready? Ready. Crisp or chocolate? Chocolate. Tea or coffee? Tea. Ski holiday or beach holiday? Beach. Heart or capital? Capital. Woo! Oh, I thought that was going to be a tricky question. You said that really fast. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, second round. Blondes or brunettes? Blonde. Muscles or toned? Toned. Romantic dinner or, exe- um, or exciting activity? Exciting activity. Boris Johnson or Donald Trump? Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to go Boris. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. I've, I've actually learned a lot. Oh. A lot. I didn't expect to learn so much. I think it's been brilliant. I mean, I'm just looking at my notes here. Half of them I didn't even ask, but because you just gave me such good answers, I'm, re- I'm really, really pleased and thank you. Aww, I, appreciate thanks, it. I appreciate your time. Um, 
For everyone watching who want to follow your journey, where can they find you on socials? You can find me at Sean Welby, which is spelled so awkward. This is the thing with my name, Jack. It's not easy. I say Sean. People say Sean, Shane, Sean. So it's S-I-A-N, Sean Welby. And it's, on, it's the same on all of them. Brilliant. Well, thank you very, very much, guys. Make sure you're following. Um, thank you very much, guys, for listening. I've been Jack Fowler. Peace. Thank you.